Hey guys, we're back with the next episode of our Shrith Fantasy Text Space RPG. Uh, last time we were doing stuff with the Raider, Order Rangers. Um, we met a new Thane. And so we were doing stuff with him. Uh, so we're going to continue on in that vein. But hey, thanks so much for hanging out and joining me. Uh, I really appreciate it. Let's just go. Uh, so we're at my castle right now. I mean, I could do some upgrades while I'm here. And why wouldn't we get a nice oak grove? Oh, I wish that's why. I want a, I want a Tissian flag. A Tissian flag. And then, what else? Enchanted. Mouth? What? <laughs> Interesting. Vase gallery. No oh, thanks. Weapon rack. Torture chamber. The Horn of Autumn. Hmm. The Rose of Summer. Watchful art. Torture chamber. No, 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 no. Jewel and crested arch. That sounds fun. Your sins of the father way down in my soul. Alright. Let's save it. Say bye to candles. Where is candles? There he is. I was like, where's candles? Alright, let's travel. We're doing Eastern. We got as good as we can get here, so um We moved on to <coughs> Southeast, where we were in Gal Jaldok. We were gonna do in the ruins of Dagaspire, so that's what we're doing. Almost three miles into the forest east of Draldok, you come upon the ruins of Dagaspire. The massive tower must indeed have been a marvel in its day, for even in its crumbling state there remain hints and signs of its former glory. Despite the ravages of time that have played havoc on the tower, there are five levels of structure left standing, and all appearances seem to indicate that they are relatively sound. You slip through the remains of a toppled stone arch and proceed across a moss and vine-entangled courtyard toward the tower's entrance. You're within sight of the thick timbered set of double doors when suddenly voices from ahead cause you to duck behind the fallen stone column. You peer out from your hiding spot and are surprised to see two armored cave goblins standing guard before the entrance. Um, let's still go with archery. The cave goblin staggered backwards, clutching desperately at the shaft now protruding from his midsection. He collapses to the ground where his body convulses for several seconds before becoming still. The remaining goblin turns from side to side, his eyes wide with fear as he attempts to determine the source of his cohort's untimely demise. You certainly notch a second arrow and take aim at the remaining guard, but before you can release the shot, the goblin turns and flees into the forest. You lower your bow and cautiously make your way up to the main doors of the tower. You stand before the set of heavy, thick, timbered doors that lead into the ancient tower of Daggerspire. The doors are slightly ajar, but you can make out nothing in the darkness beyond them. Yep, let's go in. Okay, this is cool. You're standing just inside the entrance to the tower. The heavy wood doors to the south are slightly ajar. The pale light of the world outside shimmers into the dimly to dimly illuminate what must have been one time a, a, a been a grand entry. Alright, let's go in here first. Cautiously make your way through the first level of the crumbling tower. Tattered decaying tapestries still cling to the dank mold covered walls. Time and neglect have reduced the tower's once proud trapetry, trappings to less more than piles of rotted debris. Alright, let's check the other corner here. Okay, nothing I see worthwhile that way. You arrive at the intersection of four passages. On the floor before you lies a strange mirror, its glass shattered, and its once grand wooden frame now in an advanced state of decay. 
You gaze down at the grime coated glass of an old mirror and nearly leap out of your skin. The face staring back at you from the shattered glass is not your own. You stare down disbelieved at a haggard but kindly face of a white bearded man who looks out from the shattered mirror and regards you with a solemn nod. Suddenly, a strong, clear voice fills the passage as the image of the man in the mirror begins to speak. The one you seek is here, he says grimly. You'll find him in an old library, four levels above us. I must warn you, though, he's not alone, and he is taking great pains to guard his newfound lair. The man in the mirror grows silent, and for a few moments you begin to think that he's not speaking. He will not speak again. When suddenly he continues, a door to the library bears a powerful enchantment that I grabbed centuries ago when I built this tower, he says. The enchantment has been enacted by the wicked mage whose minions now roam these passages, and his power forbodes the opening of the door. It is an unbreakable spell, save for three magical keys that will negate the enchantment. If you seek to enter the library, you must find these keys. You must make haste, though, for even now the keys are being collected, and you must also find the full mark. The image of the man in the mirror suddenly fades. You wait for several moments, staring down at the shattered glass, but it does not appear. Again, appear. Then I need three keys, he says. I think my face looks very bright. It's not bright over here. Hit the road, Jack. How's that? How's that? Better? Uh. uh I found it myself over here. Okay, I don't want negative two. No, I don't want negative five. Negative two is good. Eh, better. Not so shiny. Oh, my head's a little shiny. <laughs> Alright, let's go south first. So there's four floors down. You, the soft flap of leathery rings, wings from the darkness ahead freezes you in your tracks. You strain your eyes, peering into the shadows, hoping to spot whatever approaches before it spots you. A ghoulish hue, not creature, its body no longer within your, sh no longer than your shin, flies out of the shadows, propelled by a pair of thick black wings that protrude from its crimson flesh. You realize that this horrid creature, whose face more closely resembles that of a goblin than a human, is an imp. The imp appears preoccupied with a sizable cloth sack long, slung over its shoulder. It does not catch sight of you until it's almost flown into you. When it does fight you, the cunning creature emits a fearful shriek and immediately turns to flee, its wings fiercely beating the air. Seeing the opportunity, you leap forward and attack an imp. Imps are small winged humanoid creatures of uh, never origin who can occasionally be found in shrift, normally in the employ of powerful and less than upstanding mage. They're quick, crafty, devious, and murderous. Imps are loyal to a fault to the masses and are thus often misused to tackle dangerous and unappealing tasks. Many imps possess magical powers. Treachery and deceit are an imp's most powerful weapons. Imps come in an array of colors with certain hues signifying a more powerful variety of the species. Alright, well, Gil, he probably has one of the keys. He, he, he ran off. The imp slips down on your reach and beats his wings furiously as it flies off along the passage. You listen as a creature fearfully shrieks fades into the distance. Okay, he's gone. Not good. Same. They have to have a key. Come on. Wing Guardian. Oh. Bathed in sweat and covered in the cream of battle, you rest for several moments following your victory. When you feel that you're ready to resume your track, you check over your equipment and set off through the tower. Regate. The sound of behind lets you to the fact that you're not alone. Instinctively, you spin around and assume a defensive posture. Every nerve steel for battle. Three cave goblin warriors. Now dead. We are bathed in sweat. And we rest and move on. Alright, so let's go up north first. What's this then? Nothing. Interesting. There's a question mark there, but there's nothing going on there. Different from any other area. You arrive at a set of broad stone steps that rise into the darkness. A sudden whoosh, rush of wind fills the passage and you quickly find yourself confronted by a human-sized air elemental formed in the likeness of a sword-wielding warrior. The strange elemental creature creation stalks towards you in its blade of air leaving a trail of glowing dust as it cuts a wide arc through the darkness. 
Lana strings with Jupiter. And hide away. The slain air elemental emits a ghastly moan. It quickly dissipates. You retain your combat ready stance for a few moments lest any future enemies emerge from the gloom. When you're reasonably certain that you're not in any immediate danger, you relax your guard somewhat and examine your surroundings. Let's say... Um, I thought we were going downstairs. Then he say... And I guess he said upper levels. Alright, what's going on? This way. Nothing. A human face constructed out of stone protrudes from the wall here. Suddenly, face springs to life and speak, begins speaking in a deep, rumbling voice. Thrice, no, it's thrice over the moon, booms a voice of the animates, animated stone face. We might as well copy this sort of stuff. Uh, not bad. Joys of working on a computer. Okay. The echoes of thunder, thunderous voice fades in the distance of the stone face once again becomes still. Alright, let's go ahead and go up the stairs then. Okay. Let's attempt to sneak up a tower from here. So the stone taps the sins here to the first level of the tower. Okay, let's go north first. We carefully move to the second level of the crumbling tower of Daggerspire. And we've read the rest of that. What's this? Watery fist. The roar of the sea echoes off the walls of the passage as a towering water elemental surges into view, blocking you from reaching a set of steps that ascends into darkness. You watch in horror as the elemental morphs itself into a gigantic watery fist and rushes forward, raising itself to strike at it as it rapidly advances. Dead. Powerful elemental is no more. All that remains of the liquid terror is a small puddle at your feet. You rest for several moments following your victory before preparing to once again set off on your way. Alright. What? There's more stairs right here? It, well, the stairs are very close to each other. We gotta explore this floor before we go upstairs. Alright, let's go this way and then north. Two ogres clad in chain shirts suddenly emerge from the shadows to block the passage. The hawking beasts snarl as they horse their heavy wood clubbed spike clubs into the air and several, take several menacing steps in your direction. Death. Obviously I'm on my way somewhere. We can keep it cutless. Bathe in sweat and cover with the grammar. Battle you rest for several moments following your victory. Yes. That's the same. Alright, let's go north first. Nothing seems to be going on over here. Oh, elite goblin warrior. Yes, for bathe in sweat. Got it. We must think after every time we go somewhere. It's a workout, you know what I mean? Alright, let's go this way. You're freezing your tracks and quickly press yourself against the wall. Ahead in the passage, less than ten feet from you, sits the winged imp digging through a large cloth sack. The devious creature appears utterly engrossed. In this current task and is seemingly oblivious to your presence. Not willing to let the opportunity slip by, you creep out of the shadows and prepare to launch a surprise attack on the unsuspecting imp. However, as you draw near the imp, suddenly spins around. His eyes wide with shock and fears, it scrambles to his feet and reshoulders a cloth sack. The red skinned, leathery winged imp quickly takes flight, streaking past from the darkness as it flies by. The imp snarls, revealing a mouthful of dagger -like, dagger like teeth, and miserable creature swats at you with its clawed hand. You easily dodge its feeble attack and strike back at the wretched imp, determined not to let it escape. Except it keeps getting away, so... Hey, we got one of the keys, though. The imp flies out of your reach and disappears into the darkness. You curse a lot, frustrated that the evasive creature has managed to escape, but your frustration quickly changes to curiosity when you spot a small glowing object lying on the ground. A closer examination reveals the glowing object to be a small key. I think I'm too far back still on the video. You quickly retrieve it and slip it into your pocket. You surmise that the imp must have dropped the item during its flight and you wait for several minutes hoping the creature will return seeking the miss missing key. When it comes apparent the imp is not coming back, you cautiously resume your trek through the tower. Alright, and north. The imp know that it's thrice upon a star. Okay. Moon and stars. Uh, a human face constructed out of stone protrudes from the wall here. Suddenly the face springs to life and begins speaking in a deep rumbling voice. Know that it's thrice upon a star. Booms a voice of animated stone face. The echoes of the thunderous voice fade into the distance and the stone face once again becomes still. So we need two more keys. 
I need to explore more of this joint. But we've cleared this floor. He gets swinging it. Kill him. He gets away. Could have dropped another key. Alright, we're going upstairs. This way. Um, some behind you lecture that you're not alone. Or another elite goblin. Gotcha, what's here? Sharp crackling fills the air and the tower walls dance in the flickering glow of orange flames. As a massive fire elemental strides into view, the fiery fiend strides towards you, its flaming mouth agape and its burning arms outstretched. As you ready yourself to meet its advance, you spot a set of stone steps ascending into the shadow just below your approaching foe. Okay. Fire elemental streaks once and this disappears, plunging the immediate area into darkness and its passing. With this passing, you allow yourself several moments to recover from the brutal struggle before deciding upon your next course of action. Okay, so there's the next stairs already. More goblins. No, no thanks. Alright, let's check. About turn around. Let's go all the way over first. Earth Elemental. Who is in charge of these elementals? Another wing in it. Same sort of information. What? Wait, we missed them all together. It flies out of your reach and disappears into the darkness. You curse a lot, frustrate the evasive creatures manage to escape, but your frustration quickly changes to curiosity when you spot a small glowing object lying on the ground. A close examination reveals the glowing object to be a small key. Glowing platinum key. Are they all platinum? Key for glowing. Nope, the other one was silver. Okay, thank you. And then here's the air elemental. Add to me. All right, let's check midsection here. I mean, the sightless. You recall in shock and horror as a massive ogre lumbers out of the shadows of the edge of your light. His heavy footfalls reverberating along the passage. The fearsome beef has only empty sockets where his eyes were once rested, and its face is riddled with deep scars and open sores. <coughs> the sightless, the ogre apparently has no. Trouble sensing your presence and following your every move. The ogre grumbles as it trots towards you, its heavy stone axe poised to cut you down. Death to the heathen. I mean, he can't see. He probably is not happy living like that. I mean, there's lots of blind people who are happy. But he's an ogre. He wants to kill people. Okay, human face constructed out of stone protrudes from the wall here. Suddenly the face springs to life and begins speaking in a deep, rumbling voice. Now that it's twice along the serpent spine. Okay, thrice move, thrice star, twice on the serpent spine. Okay, let's take the stairs out of here. Up to the fourth level. Got one more key. On the stairs. Alright. Let's go this way first. Okay, nothing's happening that way. Let's go to fire elementals. Hello, goodbye. We'll probably be bathing more sweat from fire elementals because they're probably hot. Another imp. Kill. And he's out. But we got a gold going key now. And then the ogre out of nowhere. Okay, so we got three keys. That's good. We need a guardian. Now where do we use these keys? There's a question mark unaccounted for on the first floor. Still. Which I find interesting. Okay, this is where I came in. I was like, what? I did not remember that. Another ogre. We got ogre, ogres, goblins, elementals in here. Imps. Like, weird. Yeah, it's going on this way. But it's twice around the mountain. 
Okay. Thrice, thrice, twice, twice. <laughs> gotcha. Thank you for that information. Let's go this way. A leather clad goblin steps defiantly into the passage before you, a pair of scimitar clenched in its knotted fist. The cruel humanoid stares at you with cold, murderous eyes. Attack. What's going on over here? We get a massive earth element. So the floor shakes as a massive beat of earth and stone stumps out of the darkness, barring your approach to a set of stairs ascending into darkness. The mighty elemental bellows with rage as it strikes the wall with its massive root entwined fist. You quickly resume a combative, assume a combative stand as a fearsome elemental lumbles towards you, no doubt intent on doing some sim, you some serious harm. So you know now he's dead. The other elements will crumble to the ground. A sizable amount of earth and stone is all that remains of the once mighty creature. You take a moment to catch your breath before deciding upon your next move. That's a good question. What is my next move? There's no stairs. I thought it was just four floors. Okay. Fine. A tip to set the sequence of dials. A large stone chest stands in the broad alcove set into the east wall of the passage here. The lid of the chest bears an intriguing set of four engraved symbols, a moon, a star, a cord, a serpent, and a mountain. Beneath each of the symbols is a small stone dial inscribed with the number one, two, and three. The lid of the chest does not bulge when you attempt to lift it. Apart from the set of symbols and dials, there does not appear to be anything else in the chest or its lid that will allow you to open it. You're certain that the dials beneath each of the four symbols have been turned to form a proper sequence the chest will unlock. Well, luckily I know. Okay, the moon is three. The star is three. The serpent is two. And the mountain is two. No sooner has your finger left the last hour, you hear a soft click within the chest, stone chest. Take hold of the heavy lid and lift it up on it, and then later discover that is now unlocked. Using great caution, you open the lid and peer inside the chest. An identified grey cloth hood. At the bottom of the chest, you discover a grey cloth hood. You reach in and take what is curiously the only item inside the chest. Satisfied you not overlooked anything, you carefully close the lid of the chest and prepare to once again set off on your way through the tower. Okay. This is the way I came, right? I think so. So let's keep going. All the way up. Nothing can stop me. We're all the way up. We got the keys. Along the long winding passage that comprises much of the towers off the remaining level ends abruptly at a wide wooden door. The door and its plain iron latch seems untouched by the ravages of time that are evident throughout the rest of Dagger's Fire. An untarnished brass plate affixed to the middle of the door bears three small keyholes. The, the heavy wooden door is surrounded by a brilliant green glow. All right. Let's key up silver first, because silver should be first. Alright. The glowing silver key fits swiftly into the leftmost of the three keyholes. You turn the key without warning, it vanishes into thin air. Bright blue flash fills the passage momentarily, blinding you with its brilliance. And then we're going go, baby. Because that's next. Okay, is it? The glowing gold key fits perfectly into the center hole. You turn the key, and without warning, it vanishes into thin air. And then the platinum key. The glowing platinum key fits perfectly in the rightmost of the three keyholes. You turn the key, without and without warning, it vanishes. That door. You push the door slightly ajar and listen intently to the sound of voices from the room beyond reaches your ears. You can clearly make out one human voice and what sounds like the voices of at least two goblins. You have little doubt that the lone human voice is that of Croc, the renegade master mage. You pause quickly and when you realize that those beyond the door are plotting the destruction of Jaldok. You listen in disbelief as the sordid details of these plans are unwittingly laid bare to you. Using the dust storms of your, his own conjuring as cover, Croc is planning to lead an army of goblins and ogres to assail the crippled city. Then Mirandol's name surfaces repeatedly, and you note the great contempt with which Karak utters it. Knowing that you must act immediately if you are to have any chance of preventing the impending attack on Jaldok, 
Take a deep breath and push hard against the big timber door. The door swings slightly, slowly inward, revealing a dimly lit interior of a small cluttered chamber. Realize that any delay could cost you the element of surprise. You quickly stride into the library, prepared to face the unknown. You enter the library and your eyes are immediately drawn to a long, cluttered table. At the center of the size of a room where sits a man in maroon robes and two bulky armored clad cave goblins. The road man, who is obviously Karak, springs to his feet and steps back from the table with cold cackling stare fixed on you. The two goblins, who appear to be chieftains, rise and draw their axes. The grotesque humanoids cast agitated glances at the mages, waiting for him to give the signal to attack. You must think highly of yourself having made it this far, says Karak, smiling faintly, but it should be apparent even to one so insolent that your success had more to do with the foundering of mandlings than any small degree of prowess in your, you might possess. Crook motions with his hand and feet, and to the far side of the chamber, you spot the bloody corpse of the wing in it, lying on the floor. It's clear the pit of creature met a savage in the hand of its master and its goblin cohorts. I speak it certainly, even to one so bold that all was in vain, grinned the mage wickedly. It was surely, as you look upon this place, you can recognize all of your own tomb. Crook draws back his right hand with a fluid flick of his wrist, sends a bolt of blue flame hurtling across the chamber towards you. Uh, fortification. The streak of blue bolt of flame strikes the invisible barrier you erected and deflects harmlessly into the wall. Crook grins wickedly and orders two goblins to attack. Our standard bearers will march into Trildark with your head on a spike, he sneers. The two cave goblins issue a blood curdling war cry as they rush at you across the cluttered library, the blades of their cruel axes thirsty for the blood of the human. If you have a skill of archery, yes I do, and yes I would. Hey, you guys, I'm at rank 61. We're inching up. The arrow pierces the goblin lungs and the foul creature drops to the floor immediately and does not move again. The remaining goblin growls viciously as it closes within melee range. You shoulder your bow and prepare to meet the creature's benzid attack. Death to the heathen. Karuk appears to be somewhat taken aback by a victory of his goblin minions. I've been fighting goblins all the way in here. Nevertheless, he levels out his outstretched hand and begins to mutter into himself. Your heart races as you realize the formidable sp spellcaster is summoning some sort of magic. Attack! Your days in here and now, sneers Karak as he rolls up his sleeve as his robe and clenches his fist. Thane Mirandol will wish he had sent an army when I return to him with the head of his would-be hero after my monstrous legion has mashed the gates of his infernal city. Karak's fist uh, begins to smolder and his body starts to tremble. You quickly move in and attack the formidable mage. Quick attack. Krok drops to his knees and clutches at you as he painfully draws what will be his final breath. The wicked mage opens his mouth and attempts to speak, but his eyes roll back to the back of his head and he topples over sideways. He does not move again. The sound from behind you makes you spin around and your spirit sink where you help behold a dozen cave goblins peering through the open doorway into the library. Their weapons are drawn and you're left to assume they have just witnessed your victory over the renegade wizard. Suddenly the goblins turn and flee into the darkness outside the chamber. It's quite apparent that the cruel creatures want no quarrel with the human who just slew the master of the tower. Breathing a sigh of relief, you turn... Your attention back to the master at hand and begin to search through the cluttered library. At the back of the chamber, between the two stacks of moldy books, you discover a stone pedestal, atop which sits an orb of blue crystal. When you fix your gaze upon the orb, a vision of the city of Draldark appears beneath this azure shell. The vision depicts the city in the midst of a powerful and devastating death storm. You are certain these strange orbs of the device that Karak uses to control the magical storms that have assailed Draldark. In the vision you are now witnessing is at all is any indication it would appear that its power continues even with the demise of the renegade mage. You realize the only hope to break grip this foul magic on the city is somehow destroy the orb. Uh, I think destruction sounds good. The orb vibrates for a moment and then disintegrate into sparkling blue dust that rains down the floor. The wicked instrument is no more. The orb now destroyed and its wicked spell broken forever. You can you may click such a library and then move up to examine the body of Karak and the, the two fallen golden chieftains. Guess what we got? We got some moolah. Yes, I'll take the ring. Superior item. Satisfied you've not overlooked anything, you decide that your next move should be to find your way out of the tower as quickly as possible. With this thought in mind, you take one glance around the library and step back to the winding passage that led you here. You slowly and cautiously descend through the tower levels until the last you reach the ground floor. And we then do this. Okay. We're on the ground floor. Now you're gonna make me go slow out. As you look down the remains of the mirror, you surprise once again find the white bearded face along with the departed mage staring out 
Hey, from behind the shatter glass, he speaks again solemnly congratulating you on your victory over Korak and his evil minions. He then says something that surprised you. He tells you that he will now set about the destruction of his former tower from beyond the grave. As long as Dagger's fire yet stands, it remains a tool capable of great evil in the wrong hands, he said grimly. I would hope that the lifetime of knowledge and discovery which I imbued these walls with serve to teach and inspire those in the ages that follow my own, but this can no longer be, for the opportunity that the tower presents to those that think it designs is too great. Yes, Dagger's fire shall fall, and will then take its rightful place alongside me in quiet repose in an age long since past, now only remembered by scholars of history. White bearded face in the mirror, instruction to leave the tower at once and bid you a final farewell. Farewell. You stare back into the sad eyes of the old man one last time and the image begins to rapidly fade and you're suddenly overcome by a strange sensation. The sensation that washes over you is impossible to explain and lasts for only a few short moments, but it's wet in but in its wake you feel different, almost if your part major someone bestowed upon you some of the secret contained within the tower walls. Heeding the white bearded final words, you quickly move to make your way out of the tower. As you reach the entrance of the tower, the walls of the floor and passage which you stand by begin to tremble violently. You throw open the thick timbered doors and race out into the sunlight of the early afternoon. Watch from a safe distance as the imposing structure breaks apart and collapses into a mountain of rubble, sending a massive cloud of dust into the air with its passing. In a matter of minutes, the ancient tower of Dagaspire is no more. You bow your head and offer a silent prayer of the remains of Dagaspire, which you cautiously note now serve as a tomb for both the tower's first and last master. You turn away from the ruins and set off to the forest to Galdrop. You return to Jaldok Finds a city that is much renewed. The dust storm that ravaged the area for over a month is now only a painful memory. The streets of the city begin bustling with commerce as Jaldok returns slowly returns to life. You're approached by a group of city guards when a horseback can tell you that Thane Marindor wishes to see you at once. You climb into the back of one of the horses and are taken to a broad tower in the midst of the city that houses the Thane's residence. Thane Marindor is overjoyed by your success and he congratulates you on the completion of a mission that he feels has saved Jaldok from certain destruction. It is as we feared then, he says, when you tell him about the invasion of Karak and the monstrous legion he had planned, beleaguered by the, those raging storms. We would have been at the mercy of any foe with strength enough to storm our gates. I can only thank the old father by the, that by the hand of a hero such thing did not come to pass. The Dane is especially pleased when you describe the circumstances of Karak's demise. It is important that he met an end in such a fashion, he says. We have concluded your report and mage, like Karak would no doubt have many tricks at his disposal to preserve his own wretched life. Your account suggests that he is no opportunity for deception. I am pleased and confident that a great enemy of the city, indeed the people of Tisa, is gone forever. A large feast is held in your honor. During the lavish celebration, you meet many of Jaldok's most influential figures. During this festivities, Dane Marindol takes you aside and gives you what he calls a small token as an appreciation, a sizable quantity of gold. When you politely hesitate to accept such a generous gift, so generous a gift, he vehemently Insist and meets you in a shoulder cross. Come now, Alison, he smiles. Let us not bicker about such things. Tonight is not forever in the city reborn. We accept the gold and return the gala with the Thane. In the weeks and months following the death of Karak and the destruction of Dagaspire, the city experiences a much need needed rebirth as the citizenry get back to tending to normal business of everyday life. The story of Alison and the Wizard of Dagaspire is a tale still told to this day in the bread houses and taverns of Jaldok. Yo, hey, we've got adventures. We'll work on those next time. Um, what I do want to see if we can train in anything and skills, skills, skills. I feel like I was close on something, apparently, not. We haven't been to the blue door in quite a minute either. Okay, this is not one for that. Fine, let's go Western Patrithic. Oh, there's more. There's more adventures in Tripic. It's been a minute. See, it's, been, <laughs> it's been a long time since I got an experience bonus. Okay, uh, they're available to upgrade, but how does one upgrade them? The silver eye ring. Do we even have that? Mark of 
Okay. I have the ebony ring. I don't have the red ring or the green ring or the blue ring. I think a motley wonder. Oh, I still need to do this too. All right, well, we're going to end the episode there. Thanks so much for hanging out and joining me. Until next time, you know what I'm going to say. Peace.